Okay. So, uh, yeah, if any of you have any questions throughout, uh, just stop me and let me know. Um, but yeah, I'll just get into it here. Um, I'm going to start by showing you a YouTube video, which I think is kind of fun. I'll only show you like a, a minute of it. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're talking about uh, sorting today. Um, and sorting is, it's kind of like a, a computer science-y thing. Um, like in traditional, like college or something, when you learn about computer science, you learn about data structures and algorithms. And um, a very common algorithm um, that computers do and that you might sometimes have to do from time to time, but you generally don't have to do on your own because there's a lot of, you know, it, it's been done before. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, but uh, sorting algorithms, it's like a very common topic. And so uh, there's this fun video here that's visualizing different sorting algorithms. And um, so it's just a visual of it. And I think it's kind of fun. So I'll, I'll play it for just a sec. And you can hear, I don't know if my computer audio will come through, but um, if it does, you'll hear it. there's like a funny noise that happens. Um, Yeah, I can't hear the audio, but then the little speaker symbol on YouTube uh, doesn't seem like the volume is all the way out. You can't hear it at all, or you can hear it a little bit? I can't hear it. You can't? That's probably good. It's, it's really loud and annoying. <laughs> okay. But um, it just sounds like a bunch of beeps and boops because it's making uh, making noises for all the different things that it's sorting. but. Anyways, this is uh, just visualizing different uh, sorting algorithms. So there's a bunch of different ones. Um, and you don't have to know how to do any of this stuff on your own. JavaScript comes with a sorting uh, method for arrays built in. And I'm pretty sure it uses quick sort, which this, this sort uh, that we're seeing right here, this is quick sort. Um, so basically, there's a bunch of different um, techniques that you can use to sort things in computer science or in coding. Um, and these are things you'll learn about in like a computer science textbook or something. Uh, you generally don't have to like implement this on your own. Um, there is basically just, um, you know, a set amount of these things that people have discovered over time and you just get to use the best ones which most programming languages uh most programming languages have uh a sort like built in as an array method and so yeah javascript does and uh behind the scenes it's doing some crazy stuff so i just think it's fun to, to see the visual of it there um but yeah so a uh, link, yeah, I'll share a link to this. Um, put in the chat here. Okay, so um, today we're talking about sorting and searching and pagination. Except we're not, uh, we're not really doing any of these things except for sorting. Uh, just doing a few different ways to sort, um, but. Um, I think sorting makes sense. There's, uh, there's a couple different ways you can sort things. Uh, one is by al alphabetical. So, you know, B comes after A, you all know that. And then another is numeric. And, um, so, you know, one before two or whatever, and there's also ascending and descending order. And um, ascending means going up. So um, like one would go before two. So it gets larger and larger. Uh, like you, you could have an array that's like 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That would be ascending, and then descending would be uh, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Um, and so today we're going to be implementing sorting in a couple different ways. Um, and it's a common thing when you're interacting with like data from a database, uh, you want to either display it sorted or uh, just as part of your like app, you might need uh, to work with sorted data for some reason. Um, but for this, we're just, we have these to do's in your Airtable. Um, for me, it's cats. I have cats because, um, yeah, I have a cat list, not a to-do list, but same thing, um, all the same concepts apply. And uh, we're going to be, like, there's going to be three different ways that we're going to sort these cats. And so I'll just get into it, and we can walk through them. Um, OK, so there's these are the different uh, possible approaches. One is passing the view query parameter in the API request. So that is this first one. Um, sort by the Airtable view order. The second one is sort by Airtable field. And the third one is sort with JavaScript. Um, and just to kind of explain what these different things are. So uh, when you have a like a URL, like right now we're doing fetch and you're fetching um, your to-dos using a specific URL in your app. And I'll show you the app here. Uh, yours might look a little bit different than mine because I stored, well, first of all, I have some stretch goals. So I have remove cat and add cat. Um, you might just have, those were stretch goals. You might just have the fetch uh, cat or fetch to do. Um, and uh, here is where we're actually doing the fetch. Response equals a wait and then fetch which is that built-in JavaScript thing that interacts with something over the internet. Um, and you can have different types of requests. So we're passing in options here, and this is a Git request. So we're defining this options object, and then we're passing in the options here. Uh, you could just copy this object and put it right there. You'll sometimes see that, but that makes this look a little bit more messy. And so we can define the object right here, or the options. Right here is its own object. Um, but what this is, is this is uh, options for fetch, which is defining a type of HTTP request. So the type of request is a get request, which means we want to get data. The other types of requests are post, which means you want to push data to the server, like you want to add a new to-do. And then there's also, um, there's delete. And then there's two different types of update. There's patch and um, upsert, I think. I sometimes forget about the exactly what the, the update ones are. I don't think there's an actual uh, HTTP uh, method called update. I think it's patch and upsert. But anyways, um, today we're just going to worry about git. And we're going to get um, the cats. Well, we're already getting the cats using this cat URL. And I'm storing this URL um, in an, uh, a variable that's up here. So I defined this base URL way up here. Uh, you might have defined your URL inside the function itself. And so just to make it more similar to what you might have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. So I'm going to copy that. And paste it right there. Um, actually, how about I I'll start in a variable. URL equals this. And then I'll just put the URL right there. So we're fetching the URL and then passing in the options too. The reason the URL looks so weird is because, well, it's a string, but we're using environment variables to store 
what are called secrets. So um, the Airtable database we have, it's kind of like our app needs to like log in to our database. That's kind of, you know, a good analogy for these secrets. So we have the Airtable base ID and the table name. And this is actually the part, uh, the API token right here. This is the part that's um, our API key, um, which is basically like, you know, we're storing all these things in environment variables because that's standard practice. Uh, when our code actually runs, uh, these just get filled in with the values that we specify in our environment folder or file right here. So .env.local. And I'm not going to open that right now because I'm recording and that has my database secrets in it. Um, and I don't want to expose those to the world because that's a security vulnerability. Um, so this URL, even though it looks kind of weird, uh, it's just because we're storing some of the string in like separate. We're storing it in this environment file. But uh, when our app runs, these will get replaced with actual values. And then this will just be a string that looks like a URL. Oh. Um, and when this gets turned into a URL, it'll get passed into our fetch. And then we're fetching from that specific URL. And that defines what the data is that we want. Uh, we want the data that's at this URL. A URL is a universal resource locator. And so uh, that's really what it does is it, it says there's some resource that's available on the internet and we want to access that resource. And so it's kind of like, uh, it's like a, like your house address. Like if you want to order a pizza, um, they need your address so that they can send it to you. Um, and so this is like an address for something online um, or something that's available over the internet, which is um, your Airtable. And, and uh, part of the URL will be like Airtable.com. And then uh, this V0, that's like, it's typical for um, like an API to have a version number specified. So that like, if they were to make a bunch of updates and upgrades to their API, but it ended up like changing the way their whole thing worked, they don't want to make it so everyone else's app needs to be updated, they'll just switch to a new version number and then you can stay on their like old version if you don't want your app to break. Um, so they have their version number, which is V0. And then we're specifying our Airtable base ID and then our table name that lets, uh, that lets fetch know, like once it hits um, Airtable servers, um, Airtable will direct the request to our specific uh, base, our like table, and get our specific to dos. So I'm talking about URLs, kind of diving deep right away into like what is going on with this fetch and this URL. And it's because the first method for sorting is going to be we're going to ask Airtable to sort our to-dos for us by specifying that in our URL. And so that's a pretty common thing. Um, when you're fetching data, you can actually send some information in the URL that specifies, hey, I want this data, but I want it to be sorted in this specific way. And so there's basically like, there's a lot of uh, information going on in a URL. Uh, you can send specific information like, you know, not only do I want my to-dos, but I want them sorted. And so there's something that you can add to your URL to make sure that Airtable will send back sorted to-dos. And so that's this first part that we're going to do. Uh, and actually the second part too. These are both going to be adding things to our URL so that Airtable can give us sorted to-dos back. So the sorting is going on on Airtable's server. And then when the to-dos are transmitted to us through the internet, they're actually sorted already. 
Um, and it's just some specific, there's like a, a convention about like what, how you structure URLs, um, specifically when you're working with what's called a REST API. Um, you don't have to know what that means, but there's like basically just conventions about how you access a specific thing. And then if you want it sorted. And so uh, there will be similarities if you're working with Airtable or any other like API out there. Um, and it's not always the same, but there's some similarities. Uh, so I'll just go through and do this. We'll start with this one. So we're going to ask Airtable to sort it for us by specifying in our URL uh, that we want to we want our to do sorted. Um, in the instructions, they have this to do container. Uh, and just like last time, uh, they talked about to do container in these instructions. I think that's outdated. I think we don't have a to do container uh, component. Uh, so just ignore that. Just wherever you see to do container, just think app dot jsx they're just talking we want the file where we're doing the fetch and so uh in my case i'm doing the fetch in app.jsx um so the file might be wrong that they're talking about here uh, we just have to find the fetch and the fetch request at least in my case i have it in my app.jsx and i think that's where you all should have it too um Oh, actually, I think I, yeah, I put these, I put these notes into Markdown in my uh, code editor here so we can see them here. Less jumping around. Okay. So I'm going to open the app.jsx. So right here. Um, I'm going to locate the fetch request for returning list items from the Airtable API. So we're looking for the fetch request that gets items, and that is right here. You might have it as a function called fetch data or something else. Um, this is like a helper function that uh, we're, all of our fetch stuff is going on in here. Um, and we're also setting the new to-do list to the new values in here. So this is where we're kind of getting our to do's, or in my case, my cats. So um, we found that, the fetch. At the end of the URL, append a query parameter with the name view and value grid percentage 20 view, or the name of your view in Airtable if you changed it. OK, what does that mean? Um, so at the end of your URL, oops, sorry. So where's our URL? Well. You might have it, you might be passing it directly in there. You might be defining it right there. For me, I pulled it out and I'm defining my URL right here in a different variable, a separate variable, just to make it easier. Um, but wherever you're defining your URL, you should look for like the HTTPS colon slash slash. Look for this. Uh, that's where we want to be, we want to be modifying this, this URL right here. Um, and maybe I'll pull this. I'm going to split the view here so now I can see the instructions down here. OK, at the end of the URL, append a query parameter. So maybe I should really quick talk about what is a, what is a, query, a query parameter. So a query parameter is the part of a URL that uh, you can define that says, like, the, the main part of the URL is what do I want to get? So I want to get my to-dos. Um, you could also say, like, delete or update or add or whatever. So the main part of the URL is, like, kind of what the, the resource is that you're trying to either get or modify or delete or whatever. Uh, that's the main part of the URL. And then after that, so after this whole thing, which this will end up being um, this, and then this is going to be the Airtable base ID, and then this is going to be the table name. Uh, now we can do things after all this. And, there, and there's a slash between those. You'll see a lot of slashes in URLs kind of um, separating uh, different things. And so at the very end, you can add what are called query parameters. 
and a query parameter is, well, a query is like a, um, it's, you'll see it in like, um, if, if you have heard about like interacting with databases, you'll hear about SQL um, and that's a query language. And there's basically a query is, um, it's like defining what information you want. So you're telling a system, what is the information that I want? What is the data that I want? So that's your query. Your query is like what, it, it's kind of defining what, what you want. And so a query parameter is kind of like a parameter in a function. It's like a value that you can pass in to a URL that says, I want this information and this is kind of how I'm specifying it. And so, yeah, query parameter, this is how you specify what information or, or like the, the type, it's like extra information about what you want um, after, after the end of your URL. So uh, a query parameter has a key and a value. Um, or I guess right here they're saying name and value, but same thing. So the name is view, and then the value is this grid percent 20 view thing. So, um, and then there's this hint that says kind of the format, like what does a query parameter actually look like? Um, a URL query begins with a question mark and is followed by a name value pair. It's followed by name value pairs. So you can have multiple query parameters separated by an ampersand name equals value and name equals value. So whenever I click on this, it does that. Um, so yeah, there's this spe specific format that you'll see for a query parameter and um, it kind of looks weird until you uh, see it. I wish they gave you more of like an actual like full example of a URL with a query parameter, but I'll just show you what it would look like here. Um, I'll do like, an example here. I'll just copy that. So that's our current URL. And then we're going to have like our database ID and then the table name. And then at the end here, this is where we're doing our query parameter. And what this is going to end up looking like is you start the query parameter. It begins with a question mark. So we're going to put a question mark there. Oh, that's Copilot. Maybe I'll turn it off. I think I can. Uh, disable completions. That's good. OK, so query parameter, uh, at, at the very end of your URL, you do a question mark. And then you do a key and a value. So the key is like, um, and you actually have to look at the API. Like You would have to read the Airtable documentation if you were doing this out of the context of an assignment. You'd have to read. Airtable's documentation and see what kind of query parameters you can do. But um, Code the Dream has already given us what we need. Uh, we do view, so that's like the key, and then the value. You do equals, and then the value. And the value is right here. Grid percent 20 view. Uh, the percent 20. That's kind of confusing. Uh, that is, I'm pretty sure it's um, an ANSI character for a space, or it's like a URL uh, encoded space. Basically, a URL can't have a uh, space in it. Like if you were to like go and type into your URL up here, you can't do a space. It doesn't work. Um, it's just a limitation of the way that like URLs are parsed. You can't do spaces. And so anywhere where there's a space, it'll get replaced with a special value. And there's a couple different characters that'll get replaced with special values. But a space is always replaced with percent 20. Just some random characters. I don't know why they chose that, but that's what it is. So this, you could imagine this being grid space view. But there's the percent 20 to indicate a space. Um, so this is what our final URL should look like. Should look something like this. But remember, our ID and our table name are getting 
imported from our environment variables here. But the very end of it should always look like view equals grid 20% view. And then uh, this, remember, is just a space. Doesn't mean 20%. That doesn't mean anything. It's just grid space view. Um, oh, and there's also, sorry, to start your query parameter, you do the question mark. So this is one query parameter now that says, um, and, and I might have to like double check with our table what this actually means. Um, okay. So I think, I think what it's talking about is we have this like grid view here. Um, and so there's different views in Airtable and you can like have like a bunch of different data in your table and then you can create a new view and you can like kind of sort the data. You can like filter it in a specific way and save that as a view. And so for now, we just by default have one view and look at that, it's grid space view. So that kind of makes sense. Uh, the space is being replaced with the percent 20, but um, so this grid view, this is a view defined in Airtable, and then whatever the order is that's in this view should be now reflected when we uh, fetch here. And if we had different views, you could probably specify a different view here. Like if you had another view, we made another one here. Like, uh, I don't know how you do it. I'm sure there's a button somewhere. Mm -hmm. But if we created a new view, then you could sort them differently, and you could probably put that new view right here. So that's what we're doing here. We're saying whatever the, the order is right here, and we can move them around. Whatever this order is, we want the data to be returned in that order. So I think that was all for this step. Uh, should look like that. Run your application, um, verify that. Okay, so let's, I'm running my app. I already did npm run dev. Went to this URL. There we go. So we have our cats here. And so now what it wants us to try, and if, if you're getting an error at this point, it's, I'm sure, it's probably because there's something about this that isn't quite right. So double check and verify, because if you're getting an error, then it's probably your URL that isn't working right. Um, and okay, so, so what we wanna try now is if we go to, I'm gonna pull this over and go to my Airtable. If I rearrange these to-dos in Airtable now, I should expect that when I reload this page, it'll show the to-dos or the cats in the order that I rearrange. So let's put Cat Stevens at the top. Okay, now Cat Stevens is at the top before he is at the bottom. Let's try reloading. And there we go. At the top now. So that was the first step. That was sorting it in terms of this view right here. So now in our Airtable, we can specify what order we want these in just manually, and then it'll always show up in that order here. Doesn't really do much. Uh, if, if it wasn't already doing that, then um, like I, I kind of figured it was doing that already. That's something that Airtable would specify like how they handle that, but cool. So we did that. That's the first sort. And now this is a different one using the same technique. We're going to use query parameters in the URL here. So this is, again, we're sending some extra information in the URL that tells Airtable, um, like it interacts with their server and says, I want to sort the data in this specific way. So this one, we're actually doing a sort by a uh, field. Um, we're sorting by the title of the to-do and we're sorting by ascending order. So locate the same fetch, add at the end of your URL um, the following query parameters. Don't forget the and delimiter. 
sort zero field with the value title and then sort zero direction with the value ASC for ascending, which will sort in alphabetical order. Okay, so we're just adding a couple more things to this URL here. Maybe I'll pull that up over here. Okay, so more query parameters. So this was our first one. We have the uh, question mark to say, we're about to do a query parameter. That's how you kind of like um, start a series of query parameters um, is you say question mark and then whatever comes after that is going to be uh, a key value that indicates uh, some query parameter. And a query parameter usually, it, it sometimes has to do with like uh, sorting the data. It sometimes has to do with like, um, I don't know. There's all sorts of different things you can specify. You could even specify like user equals blah, blah, blah. And then it'll give you like some resource that it, uh, you know, like if you, if it was facebook.com, you could say user equals blah, blah, blah. And I don't know if their server actually works that way, but it could, you could imagine you could say user equals blah, blah, blah. And then their server would give you all of the posts from a specific user. So it's basically a way of just sending over, um, some information, some extra information to their server. And so the first, this is a confusing point. <laughs> um, the first query parameter starts with a question mark. And if you do more after that, they start with that, an ampersand. I'm going to zoom in. This thing here. which is like the and, the word and, that's the symbol for that, an ampersand is what it's called. Um, yep, Natalie got it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's, if you do shift and then number seven on your keyboard, at least if you have a similar keyboard to mine, I think, I think they all do that, but shift seven should be this and symbol. Um, okay, so, the first query parameter, you start it with a question mark before it, and then all the rest, you start with an and before it. It's really weird, but it's kind of like query, like a question. Um, and then the first one, and so you're kind of like combining them. You're kind of saying like, I want to do this and these other things. And so what are these other things? Well, right here, the the key is sort zero field like that. So we're just going to paste that. And then the value is title. Oh, whenever I double click in here, it brings me to this. Oh, title like that. Actually, you know what I can do to make it even easier? I could say, um, const query one equals this this way you can kind of like see how they're all separated well So I can just kind of create these queries, store them in separate variables, and then um, add them onto the end. So I could say, there's our URL, and then I'll do plus query one. Oh, wait, I need to do, we're doing string concatenation here. Let me just do a plus at the end of all this. Plus query one, plus query two. Well, that line ends up looking pretty messy, but um, <laughs> maybe I'll maybe I'll continue the. Um, I'm doing a formatted string here, so I could just continue that. 
Query one, query two in there. Sorry, just, just doing that. That way you can see it's, uh, this is the first query. That's what that looks like. And then the second one there. And then um, there's gonna be one more, which is for direction. So field is like, if we went to Airtable, we'd probably see what field means. Um, fields. Oh, okay, so there's a completed at field, which is hidden. Um, but I guess a field is like title is a field. And then, um, and so here we're saying sort by a field, and then the field is title. So we're specifying this column right here. And then the second one is sort zero direction with a value of ascending. So query three, sort zero direction, value ascending, like that. And then I'll do plus query three. Uh, you can do this in a bunch of different ways. All you want to make sure is, because we're doing like this um, concatenated string thing right here, or whatever you call it. Um, um, a format string? I can't remember the name. <laughs> um, we're doing one of these complicated strings here where we're putting variables inside. Um, you just want to make sure that you remember the, the end result uh, looks like a URL. Oh, I forgot an and. <laughs> Thank you. You're right. There should be an and here and an and here. So the first query has a question mark, and then the second ones have ands before. Good catch. Yep, string interpolation. Thanks, Natalie. That's what this is called. So we're just creating this string that this line, I know it looks kind of confusing, but hopefully it makes a little more sense to see these query parameters as individual strings up here. Just kind of see what they're doing. Um, but that's... That's all for that. And so what that should be doing is it should be taking, we're specifying sort by the field and the field is title. And, um, oh, you know what this probably means? This, this probably means sort, and then we're adding a sort. And the, the sort that we're adding is the first sort. So if we wanted to do multiple sorts, we would probably specify the index is different for each sort. And so like index zero would be, this is the first sort out of an array of sorts if we wanted to do multiple different sorts. And so we're specifying the field and the direction both for the first sort. I assume that's what that means. Uh, this is something that, um, I don't know, maybe it's common and I just haven't seen it, but I haven't seen that before. Um, but yeah, we're, we're basically uh, doing more telling Airtable sort by the title field and the direction is ascending, which means low to high. So A to Z, alphabetical order. Um, view in your browser and ensure that your list items appear in alphabetical order by the title. So let's see, I'll reload. Oh. Loading. This happened yesterday, so I actually prepared for this. I know what's going on. So it's saying it's loading, and that's because it's not really loading. It got an error. And I just, you know, because when you're coding, you have to do everything yourself. And so it's not going to tell me that there's an error unless I specifically program it to tell me that there's an error. Uh, it'll tell me in the console, though. Um, I don't have any logic that displays an error in my app. I could add that, but for now, I just have loading. And then if it errors out, you can see it in the console. We're seeing an error of 422. And if I go to the network tab, 
this will tell me more about what that error meant. So if I reload and then go to this one with the X, the one in red, unknown field name, title. So it's Airtable is sending this response back. It's saying, I don't recognize what the title field is that you're talking about there. And so I saw that yesterday and I looked over here. I have mine, you might not have yours called this, but I have my title field with a lowercase t. <laughs> and so that that's what's causing the issue for me is my title field right here. You can see it's a lowercase t. So very small, like subtle thing that could probably take you hours of debugging, um, which would be awesome. But uh, luckily it's not gonna take you hours, hopefully. Uh, title, I'm changing this to a lowercase t. And there we go. Now my cats are showing up and they're in alphabetical order. So uh, Cat Stevens and Caddy Perry, Perry. Um, I think a, a space in alphabetical order um, appears before any other letter. And so that's why this is appearing before this, because otherwise it's just cat and cat. Uh, but we can really see like M comes after C and N comes after M. So this is in alphabetical order. Cool. So that's, uh, yeah, Natalie. I just figured out how you can create a new view on Airtable API so that you can have one view with the ascending source and then the other one with the descending. Oh, wow. That's yeah, a good so idea. You, uh, if you click on that little plus sign underneath create right next to grid, like do you see right there? Click on that little plus sign next to grid. Um, it allows you to create a new one. So you could just call that one descending view or something. Just click on descending. And then click on create new view. And then you can go on the sort, click the sort um, icon in there, and then just um, sort by title and then from Z to A. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. Out of that. And so you can use that uh, for your um, for getting data that was sorted in descending view. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing, Natalie. That's really cool. OK, so that would be a great way of we could have these different views in Airtable. And then if we wanted, we could, using the, the views we already specify in Airtable, we wouldn't even need to do this, this part, where we say the sort, because we're basically doing this in, in Airtable and then defining it using a view like that. So we could end up just changing this single query parameter right here to say view and then change the view. And that would end up sorting differently without needing these ones. So that would be one way of doing it, which would be cool. Um, that's a good call out. Thank you, Natalie. Um, OK, but for now, we're just going to do it the way that the lesson wants us to. Um, but I might, I might take that and do like a stretch goal or something at the end, we'll see. Um, OK, so right now we're sorting our cats by alphabetical order, which is awesome. We're using three query parameters to do it. The first one is uh, we're sorting by this grid view here. And then the second two are saying, within the grid view, I want to uh, select the title field and sort that by ascending order. So these three things together are all query parameters that are being put at the end of our URL. And those are all dictating how Airtable sends this, these to-dos back to us. They send it from this view, sorted in ascending order by the title field, which is awesome. OK, so now this last part, this is a different way of sorting. Uh, now we're going to be sorting using JavaScript on in our code. So before we're saying like this, this itself is not going to sort the to do's. This is telling Airtable servers sort the to do's and Airtable. They had to like kind of define in their server code, like their backend code. They had to define how their air, how their things were going to be sorted. So we're basically telling Airtable, hey, use your 
server logic to sort these to-dos. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say whatever to-dos come back from the server, we're going to sort those within our app on our end, on the front end. So uh, JavaScript has a built-in sort. And so whatever order these to-dos come in, we are going to sort them locally on our computer in our app here. Um, and the syntax can look kind of weird, but um, once you see it once, you kind of get used to it, uh, or a couple times. Um, you generally don't have to like do a lot of fanciness with the sorting. Like once you have done it a couple times, it's mostly going to be the same thing. Uh, so we're going to open our to-do container, which is actually we don't have that, so we're just doing it in our app.jsx. Um, Locate the same fetch request from the previous section. So the same one that we've been working on. Um, these are kind of redundant steps here. Inside the final method, start a new line above the existing code. OK, so they're talking about a then method. They're assuming that we're using um, like the, if you've seen, I, th I think I, I demoed like the different ways of doing asynchronous JavaScript. There's async and await, and then there's dot then. And so they're imagining, this must be from an old version of the code where you, they're using dot then. We're using async and await, so this doesn't apply. Um, so pretty much you can ignore all these. We just need to call the sort method. Um, and we need to call it, uh, the, the time that we call it is, going to be after we do response.json. So wherever you have data equals await response.json, um, that is, this is like, we have two awaits. One of the awaits is to get, it, it's the initial one, the main one that has the URL and the options. And this second one, I actually just watched a video recently on the second one, um, learning just a bit more about it diving in depth to learn, like, why do we await twice? Um, this second one is parsing the body. So this first one is really quick. We get a response from the server really quick that is only the headers come back that say, was our fetch valid or not? And then the second one, this is going to contain all the data. And so this fetch will a lot of times have a lot more information. So if we want, Basically, it gives us the ability in JavaScript if we wanted to say, I just want to make sure that this request is OK without trying to get all the body, like the whole body of the request, which the body of the request is all of our to-dos. Uh, so if, if you have a really big request, you might want to separate that out. So that's why you do two different fetches, because your first request is just for getting the headers back from the server. And then the second one is actually saying, OK, that is the information that I want. Now give me the actual body of that data. Um, so that's what this is. And once we get this data back, and I can console log it so you can see what it is. This is where we're actually going to do the sorting locally. Let's see, console log data. Maybe I'll do uh, if you do that, you can pass in multiple things into console log using a comma. And this specific syntax will make it look like there's like a little identifier there that shows up in our console. You'll see what it looks like if I do that. Just a little tip. If I go to my console now, wherever I have data, if I didn't put that, then I would just see object. I wouldn't have labeled it. So I like to label my things in console.log. And um, so let's see what this thing is that we get back from Airtable. This is the raw data. Maybe I'll zoom in here. OK. Um, so it's an object that has a property, a single property called records. And then records is an array of to-dos. They have an ID. Um, they have a created time, they have a nested property called fields, and then fields is actually what has the, 
the to do title. So it's like a what what we get back from the server is we get an object with a records array inside of it. And each object in this array is a to do. And the to do is made up of this created time and this ID, which these are kind of like metadata from Airtable. The actual information that we want in it, though, is under fields. So this is actually the data we want. And if we go to our JavaScript, you'll see we're actually a long time ago, we wrote this in a way that we actually parse out all that information. So we're doing data.records, right? Because records is a property. Dot map, we're mapping through each record. Uh, this would be to do for you. And then we're returning a new object that has an ID with the to do dot ID. And then the title is to do dot fields dot title. So fields title. It's kind of a, a crazy syntax we're doing here, but this is basically where uh, map is really useful for kind of, um, it's like a for each loop, or it's just like a loop, any old loop, but it returns a new array and whatever that array is made up of is whatever you return in this callback function. So each time this callback function um, goes over one of the items in the array, whatever it returns here is like a new formatted version of the array. And so we're creating a new array out of this data that has all the, or, or out of data.records. We're creating a new array that has just the information we want um, for each cat. So. Um, actually, I lied to you earlier when I said we were going to sort it right here. We're actually going to sort it after this because this is going to be easier. We already kind of like formatted it. So this is where we're going to sort it. Cats. So let's see what cats looks like. Reload. Cats looks like this. So we're going to sort this and we're going to sort it using JavaScript locally. Um, so wherever, and in your code, this, like, I, I'm not sure, like, if we deviated at all from what you, like, what I have and what you have, but basically where you want to add this sorting functionality is whenever you get your, like, final version of your to-dos and before you set it, like, this is set, cat list, which is actually the React setter. Like this is like when we have our like uh, cat list and set cat list that we get from set state or use state here. Cat list and set cat list from use state. This is like React state here. And before we set our actual React state, as the cat list, we want to sort this cat list. So right here is where we're going to sort it. And, and maybe I'll put like cats unsorted or like before local sort, because we're going to be sort, it, it's already sorted, but we're going to be sorting uh, locally. So I'll do a before and after and I'll, con or I'll uh, comment out the after because we haven't sorted yet. So here's where we're gonna where we're gonna add our sorting functionality. It's once we've mapped through the data and before we set uh, our React state as that data, we're gonna take this array and we're gonna sort it. So call the sort method on data dot records. Oh, they they do want us to do it on data dot records. Uh, I guess we can do it that way and pass it a custom callback function. The function to, should take two parameters, object A and object B. Function should compare. Okay, so what they're wanting us to do is instead of doing a map here, they want us to do a um, a sort. Uh, or we would, we would still end up needing to do a map because a sort isn't going to reformat the actual uh, elements in the array, it's not going to change how they look. It's just going to change the order of them. And this map is actually like altering the actual objects that the array is made up of. So we need both. And 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna call this wrong. I'm gonna say this is not the right way to do it. They're saying do it on data.records, assuming that we're not formatting data.records afterwards. Um, if you are for like if you're not formatting data.records first, if you're just setting your state as data.records, um, and then you're like dealing with having to drill into this property somewhere else in your code, then you can do it that way. But for now, for what I have, um, I'm actually formatting this cat, like this data in a way that makes sense for me to use throughout the app easier. It looks like this. I'm formatting this here and I'm gonna sort it in this format. So I'm not gonna do it to data.records. I'm gonna format it first. So I'm gonna say const sorted cats equals and we're going to get this cats array. And this cats array, remember we console logged it. It's just a bunch of cats that is now it's, it was data.records, but we're actually like pulling out just the information we need, the ID and the title. Um, and we're going to say cats.sort. So cats is an array. And in JavaScript, an array method uh, or sort is an array method. So all arrays will have a sort method on it. And that allows you to sort it. Uh, so it says call the sort method on data.records and pass it a custom callback function. And sorry, this is not all. We're, we're, still, we're still going. So you call it, and then you actually have to pass it a callback function, which, yay, JavaScript. So many arrow functions, and the syntax gets so uh, strange. but. I've kind of dipped my toes into Python, and Python, I think, has a lot of callback methods too. So, um, I guess you don't get it you don't like get it easy any easier when you go over to the Python world. <laughs> um, okay, so callback function. It's an arrow function. It looks like crazy, but it's okay. Um, we're used to seeing callback functions at this point. Um, it's going to take two parameters, object A and object B. And you can actually name this whatever you want. These two parameters here, you can name them whatever you want because we're actually defining the function here. And sort is in charge of calling our function. And then uh, we could call these whatever we want, but those are what we're calling them. Object A and object B. And then the function should compare the title field for each object and return the following. Um, so the way sort works is it takes two objects at a time in your array and it compares them, or you, you compare them. And then whatever value you decide to return, it like it uses this callback function that you create so this callback function, this is the way that you define how the things are sorted. And the specific way that they're sorted, is, it's kind of weird. You return a minus one, a zero, or a one when these two things are compared. And these two things are just going to be two elements in the array. This is going to be um, like the first element and then the second element. And then this is going to be the second element and the third element. And this is going to be the third element and the fourth element. And I'm pretty sure because it's actually doing quick sort, it's not that simple. But that's how you can think of it, is you can, you can think this is an object before, this is an object after in the array. And whatever value you return, I know the syntax is super weird in a sort, but whatever value you return, um, whether it's minus 1, 0, or 1, is going to determine um, whether this element gets placed before this element. And so the most like basic version of a sort, which you'll see this, if you just like look up a sort online, what it'll look like is, it would look like this, a, b, arrow function, a minus b. That's the most like simple version of a sort. That's if your array is made up of only either numbers or letters. 
Uh, actually, I think this would only work with numbers or no, it actually works with letters by default, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then, so that would be like ascending or descending. I can't remember which is which. And then you do a plus if you want to go the other direction. So that is the most like basic version of a sort that you'll see online, which makes it pretty simple for here. Since we're working with like uh, objects, it the syntax does get a little more complicated. Um, so we're still having this object A, object B, and then in the body of the function here, we're going to return specific values. So we're going to do some if statements. We're going to do if. It's going to compare the title field of each object and return the following. So we're going to compare the titles of these objects. So if object A dot title, because this is an element of the cap of the to-do array, and each to-do should have a title. So this is a to-do, and then this is the title of that to-do. If the title of that to-do is less than title B, and actually we could store these in a variable. I'm going to start in a variable, sorry. Title A equals object A dot title. And then I'll do the same thing for object B. So title A, title B, we're just going to store these in variables to make it a little easier. We're going to say if title A is less than title B, then we're going to return minus one. Right? That's what it says right here. Return negative one if title A is less than title B. So in this callback function for each to do, we're storing the title of the to do and then the title of the next to do. And then we're comparing them and we're, see we're seeing is this title less than this title. And in strings, this is going to be comparing strings, right? Because the title of each cat is a string. So when you're comparing strings um, in, in JavaScript, um, it determines, it, it looks at them like in alphabetical order. Um, and yeah. So, so we're going to return minus one if title A is less than title B, and then else if, so we're going to have three conditions here. If title A is greater than title B, we're going to return one. Else, return zero. So one, so if title A is less than title B, we're returning negative one. If title A is greater than title B, we're returning one. And then if they're the same, we can return zero. And remember this if else statement, like this, there's a bunch of different ways you could do this. Um, you could do else if title A is equal to title B or I think there's a problem there because it's strings. I think you do you do want to do it like this. If you did equals equals equals, it wouldn't be comparing the um, the actual like alphabetical order of them. It would be checking if the strings are like actually equivalent, like they are all the same, which we don't want to uh, look at. Or actually, it if. If they are the same, then that's the only way they won't they wouldn't be different alphabetically. I think I think that would work actually. And you'd want to return zero there. Anyways, I'm gonna keep it this way. This is the way that I'm doing it, and you can do it that way if you want. So um I would have to relook up when to pat when to return negative one, one, and zero. Like if I were to have to do sort right now in my life and I, you know, just out of the blue had to do a sort, I would go, I would have to look it up. So just so you know, like this is not something I don't remember what is the case to return negative one and what is the case to return one. It's an easy thing to like get it wrong and then flip it around and go, oh, you know, because there's only like two cases. 
um, either you're sorting in ascending or descending. And if you return negative one and one in one case, and then you're like, oh, these are the opposite order, then just flip them around. And I don't even care to remember. I'm just like, is it negative one? Is it one? I don't remember, but I'm just going to go with one. And then if that doesn't work, I do the other. But anyways, that is how you do a local sort using the sort method. Uh, so these cats should be sorted now. And I know it's a really weird syntax, but that's just how it goes. Uh, the last step is we're sorting these cats, but we need to actually store them in the React state here. So we need to set the cat list to sorted cats. That's the final step. And I could re-enable this console log cats after sort, and I could paste in sorted cats right there. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, lots of things console logged. What was that? Just so you know, I have... Um... Oh, I don't have preserve log on. If you want, you can preserve log. Um, and then when you reload your page, it'll, it'll keep the logs versus if you uncheck that, it'll clear it every time. Um, and then if you want to manually clear your console, you can click this right here, clear console. Because sometimes you get like, this is the, this is like the server, the live server thing for React. Um, and also everything appears twice. That's because React is running in strict mode and strict mode does some extra stuff. Um, but, okay, so we have cats right here. We're seeing it four times. Uh, I can't explain why. Oh, it's because we have before and after. Okay, so we have cats before sort and cats after sort. Uh, before sort, we have, well, the same order. <laughs> They're in the same order because we're already sorting on the server. Yeah, like you already had Airtable API do it beforehand. So I think that to see it working, you would probably have to like temporarily uh, comment out your current URL and then use that old URL that you didn't have the sorting done on it. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah, I could do that. So uh, what Natalie is saying is that these query parameters right here, this whole thing, this is sorting it already. And so that sort that I just wrote doesn't do anything. And so if I want, I could like comment these out, uh, get rid of these, that should do it. So now if I reload before sort, look at the order. Actually, I might need to cat Stevens, Neil Catry, Caddy Purry. Huh. It is. Oh, maybe you it's you go uh... back into Airtable API and you just drag the fields out of order. Well, I think they are out of order. I was looking at it. Okay, let me I'm gonna make sure I'm caught up on the chat here really quick. Um Maybe your actual view already has a sort on it. So maybe if you uh, uh, get rid of that query one as well on your URL. Yeah, yeah, I could try that. Huh. They're always sorted, even though it's in a different order. Um. Maybe it's the location of these console logs. Let's see. Before local sort. Or maybe your browser already cached your page, so it's looking at a good point. Yeah, that's version. that's honestly what I'm thinking. <laughs> that could be it. Uh, let's see. Go to the network tab. This doesn't really matter. I I don't want to get hung up on this, so if I can't figure this out in a I second. Then... Um. Where was the fetch? Fetch. fetch. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, it's probably caching. I'm going to disable cache. You can click disable cache right there. Uh, now it'll probably do a fetch. Never mind. I'm not going to. Oh, wait. Here it is. Okay. Yeah. So this is not in alphabetical order now. So yeah, I bet if I go to my console before sort. Before sort. No. Okay. I don't know what's going on there, but I'm going to uh, move on. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We are sorting the cats locally, which is good. And that's that's the end of the assignment as far as like uh, without stretch goals or anything. I'm going to re re-enable these things. Oh, wait, I think there was one last part. Sorry. You have to actually uh, sort them in the opposite order. So I'm going to change that sort function um, and do it in the opposite order now. So re-enabling those. So I think this last part is verify that your list items appear in ascending order, which is uh, alphabetical, A to Z. Now let's try reversing the order. Update the sort callback function to return the following. One, if title A is less than title B. So title A less than title B. Now we want to return one. And then otherwise, title A is greater than, we return zero, or negative one. And then uh, in case that they're equal, we return zero either way. And now they should be assorting, or, or uh, sorted in descending order, which is Z to A. So reverse alphabetical order. And yep, there they are. So we have N, because L, M, N, O, M, N. So now we have N, M, and then C. So this is now reverse alphabetical order. And just to demonstrate that, if I were to change these around again, you can see. So remember, we have Neil Catrick Harris at the top. If I change these around and then reload, now we have Cat Stevens at the top. So this is sorting, and this is sorting locally on my computer. Um, cool. OK. And that's all. And if, if you want, everyone, uh, you can you know feel free to go. Um, I'm happy to try out some stretch goals. I honestly haven't even done them yet, but I was thinking um, if y'all want, you can hang around and I might try tackling one or two, or maybe I'll, we'll see. Or I can uh, help with debugging. If anyone has any, you know, errors or any questions or anything like that, uh, I'll open the floor to questions. So... Yeah. Right. How's everyone feeling? You already helped me with mine, so I think I can probably like finish debugging um, the rest just with what you taught us today. Um, so like, if you want to go on and do the stretch goals or like answer somebody else's question, I think I'm good. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. How's everyone else feeling? Any questions? Doing good. How's all this feeling? Is is most of it making sense? I know the sort thing. I mean, I can't even, like, I don't even remember how sort works for the most part. I just remember the basics because it's one of those things that I'm like, I have a certain number of things that I care to remember, and that's one of them that's kind of like, mm. I feel like this really cleared up a lot of things for me because I could figure out how to sort an array if it was just a plain array before, but not like an array of objects. Yep. So. That's good. Yeah. It's it really is like once once you have objects, you have to like make sure that in your callback function, you're actually like drilling into the properties that you want to sort by. And just to show you, you could if you wanted, um, I'm pretty sure you could still do this in like a one-liner. So instead of storing these in different variables, we would um, we wouldn't store 
title A and title B in separate variables. So we could do that, object A dot title, object B dot title, and the same thing right here. This will make the, it'll make this a little more concise, but it'll be a little more confusing to read. Um, we don't even need the if statement. We could actually take the if statement out. And I think if we just return, we delete that whole body of the function, we could make an implicit return and we could return object a dot title is less than object b dot title. Um, and again, this is one thing where I might have to flip this around to get to what we want, but I'm pretty sure this would end up getting, getting us to the same. Okay, so we're sorting alphabetically. And then if I change this sign around, no. Oh, I might have to change it to a, um, well, I, I guess I could do a, um, ternary expression, minus one, otherwise uh, one. Let's see about that. There we go. I don't know if there's different, more concise ways to do that, but this is definitely more concise than what I had before. Um, and in the case that it's a zero, it, this might not work because it might not return a zero when I really need. So what I might want to do is a double ternary expression so I might do like that, and then if they're equal, um, or no, how about that, and then the other way. So if object A dot title is greater than object B dot title, return minus one, and then if not, it goes into this one. Um, and this is another ternary expression. If this is true, then it returns one, and if all of those all those are false, it returns zero. I might have gotten that wrong. Yeah. Double ternary expression. <laughs> you want to get crazy with it. Uh, but anyways. That is sorting. And okay, so let's let's move on to the stretch goals. So I'll open the notes again. And I haven't done these, so I'm just going to kind of wing it here. Um, create a toggle button so that the user can switch between ascending and descending sort order. So does anyone have an idea of how we could do this? So I guess uh, instead of um, just uh, changing your sort data, sorted cats function, you could have one function for uh, sorting ascending, and then another function for sorting descending, kind of like the function before you change the, and then the function after you change, but in two separate functions. And then uh, you can call the ascending sort function uh, through an ascending button. Uh, like the button could, for instance, just say A to Z, and then the descending sort function, you could call that like by clicking on uh, a descending button, which could just say Z to A on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. That would definitely work. Thanks, Natalie. Okay, so uh, we could take this callback function and we could we could use this callback function for one for sorting in one order. And then we could call a different function that we define for another order. And the way we could do that is, well, we could we could take this callback function, and even though you usually see like an arrow function defined in in place like this right here, you could actually define this function somewhere else. So I could even like go up here to the top of the page, and I could say like a new function. This is just a function for sorting. This is a callback function, and I could say sort ascending, or how about it's sort cats ascending? And it's not a generic sort function because we're having to drill into these objects right here. So specifically for cats, because cats have a title. 
And then we'd need to pass in object A and object B. Um, and actually, a better way to do this, honestly, would be instead of making it specific to cats, we could make it more generic by saying these just have to be strings. And then when we call the function, we actually pass in dot title so that we drill into the properties when we call the function. That way the function doesn't have to be passed the entire object and it doesn't have to be like um, specific to cats. It could work with any, any sort of string. So instead of doing that, instead of object A dot title and object B dot title, I'll just do object A like that, replace that. And then object B, I'll do the multi-select thing, object B. I don't know what that error is for. Mm -hmm. um, so this would be sorting for one order. And so I'll, I'll first set this one up. So I'll call this in my sort. Let's see, sort, cats.sort, and I'll just pass that function in. Um, and I'm actually, if I just pass that function in for every cat, it'll pass in the entire cat object. And this function doesn't work if we pass in an object. It only works if we pass in strings. So the way to get around that is, well, I could do an arrow function inside. And this arrow function is in charge of calling that arrow function using, uh, I could do, well, object A and object B. And I could call this function using object a dot title and object b dot title. So now we're defining the sort. Sort is being um, passed this callback function. And then inside our callback function, we're actually calling the real callback function. We're just passing, we, we have two different functions in here. We have this callback function, which we're defining in line. And then we have this other one that we defined up there, which is the actual sort function. And we're calling them in two different, or we're using two because this, this function wants us to drill into these object A and object B properties, title, title property. Uh, so that should work. That should work for sorting in one direction. Try reloading. And then, um, let's see, I forgot, I always forget what uh, descending, is alphabetical. Okay, so so we don't want to call, uh, if this is called sort ascending, then we need to switch these around because apparently descending is actually alphabetical. So we, this is alphabetical, so we need to call it descending or we could switch, switch these around. I'm gonna switch these around. Wait, what was it before? Did I get that wrong? Hmm. It says I'm not reading object. Oh, <laughs> I defined this in a really weird way. This is not how it should look. I basically have a function with uh, an arrow function inside of it. And this arrow function is not doing anything. It's not even being assigned to a value. It's not being called. There's So I need to delete that. That's how it should look. Let's see. OK. So that is sorting in ascending order, which is non-alphabetical. And then we could do another one that's sorting the opposite. So we could do sort cats descending. And there's different ways to solve this, this stretch goal. This is just one way of doing it. Uh, making two different functions. One of them is sort ascending, one of them is sort descending. And then I can call them conditionally based on, let's see, where are we? So I could say cats.sort, sort sort ascending. And how about I, uh, this, I, I don't have a function body for this arrow function right here. Um, there's no like curly braces. 
even though it's on a separate line, it's uh, still just one line and there's no curly braces, which means you know how error functions work. That means it's still an implicit return. I'm going to add a function body. So now it's not an implicit return, which means we have to return. And the reason I'm adding the function body is an actual like in curly braces with uh, an explicit return is we want to actually have some logic here that responds and calls a different function to, depending on um, a button or the value of a some state. So I'm going to say um, return cats ascending. Let's try doing descending. So I'm going to return sort cats descending, which is our other function. And I'll just see. I'll make sure that works. So we have put them side by side. So we have descending. And we can see Cat Stevens on the top. And we can do ascending, save, and it's the opposite. So non-alphabetical, opposite, which is good. So we can call both of these functions now, and it sorts it differently. So now we have to do an if statement, and it just returns the result of calling one of these functions. So if we, if we call this function, it's going to sort it one way. If we call descending, it'll sort it a different way. So we need an if statement in here. But before we do the if statement, it needs to be dependent on some state. Because remember, we need to say a toggle button so the user can switch between ascending and descending order. So let's make a toggle button. Uh, and the toggle button actually needs to change some state. First, we can make the toggle button. So I could say, like, right here, I could do a button. Um, change sorting order. We'll make sure that button's showing up. Yep, it looks terrible. It's not styled like everything else, but maybe I'll do a, a really quick styling on it. Let's see. I don't want to get carried away. Button, and this is a good good thing for using Copilot, honestly. Copilot's good at this. <laughs> Yay! Looks way better. Thanks, Copilot. Um it's it's looking at all my other CSS and it's kind of feeling out the vibe and giving me a certain look based on everything else. And I, if I do mar some, sometimes if I do margin auto or margin auto, sometimes that'll center things. I never know when and why. Okay, it works on those buttons. I forgot. I have different types of buttons. Let me let me actually give this button a class name. Where's my completions? Not showing up. OK. Oh, I have I have a preference on this to not do completions. Sort button. Okay. Now I'll go to my CSS. This is a class called sort button now. So now this should only apply to this button right here. Um, and then I might put the button in a div which will help um, class name. Um, I like to be really specific with my CSS. I like to say, like, this is just like the sort button container. So now I'll go to dot sort button container. There we go. OK, so now I have this button to change the sorting order, and it doesn't look terrible, which is good. Um, let's maybe I'll turn off auto completions again. OK, so now in this function here, uh, we want to, or actually, our button, when we click our button, we want to change some React state, and the state will store the sort order. So I'm going to say up here, we need some React state that says uh, sort 
order or we, maybe we can do it. It's going to be a Boolean, right? Because we're only either sorting in ascending or descending. And so this would be a good case for a Boolean. So we could say like sort ascending and that's either true or false. And we could start it with, uh, I don't know, doesn't really matter, I guess. Let's do false. Actually, let's do this sort descending. Because descending is alphabetical. Because it's like A is small and Z is large. And so that's descending when we have this, this small. Or wait, that's the opposite. I might be confusing myself. How does it again? Descending Z to A. Oh, it's ascending or descending alphabetical. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just say let's let's follow what this says. So it says ascending, which means A to Z. So let's start with ascending. Oh. Ascending. Alphabetical order, right? Doesn't really matter. I'm getting hung up on it. Okay. Oh. So now the button should change this. So when I click the button, I'm going to do an on click. And when I click the button, I'm going to call that setter for changing the sort order. So what I could do is define like a handler for that. So and I can do that. I'll do that. I'll do function handle sort toggle click. That's probably the right way to. I probably should have been naming this button like sort toggle button all along because it's toggling the sort. Um, so on click, we're going to call this handle sort toggle click function. And then in this function, what I want to do is set sort order to the opposite of whatever the sort order currently is. It's not defined the name of this. Oh, sort ascending or sort descending, or, or sort ascending and sort set sort ascending. <laughs> okay, so we're going to call that function. And then we're going to return the opposite of whatever the current sort is, which I could actually just pass in whatever the current sort is. So I could say that. So if sort ascending is true, this will set it to false. And if it's false, it'll set it to true. Um, and we could use one of those like callback. We could use one of these, but uh, I think this is a little, you only need to use those if it's like uh, in certain cases and I don't think we need to use it here. So this should be fine. Um, so this should toggle our sort order. And, and maybe I'll just make a little display here for our sort order, just so we can see it. I'll do that. OK, so sort ascending is true. And then if I. Flip that, now it changes to false. And so when it's false, now I want to call a different sorting function. So here in the sort, I'm going to call sort ascending if sort ascending is true. So I'm going to say if sort ascending, then 
return sort cats ascending. Else, just going to copy that line over, sort cats descending. And I think that should do it. Um, the only problem is it's only uh, it's only only going to do it uh, on our fetch. It's not going to actually retrigger sorting the cats. That's something I didn't think about. So we need to actually uh, say like sort. We need to make a handler for sorting cats. Whoops. Um, and then in here, I'm going to do that. Oh, wait. Do that whole thing here. So we're going to take our cats array. Wait, what's it called up here? Cat list. OK, it's getting messy because it's not going to sort our cats. At, th at the current way that it was, it was only going to sort within this fetch data function. And this fetch data function only gets called when we re reload the page. And when we reload the page, it's not going to actually uh, keep the previous sort order. So what we need to do is we need to recall the sort function. We need to change this to call it. Um, basically, I want to pull this sorting logic out um into its own function so that we can call it when we get the cats back right here but then we can also call it on the click of a button this handle sort handle sort toggle click function so i'm going to say sort cats i'm going to say sorted cats uh let's let's just have it take in a cats array and then i'm going to do cats.sort and i'm just going to return that i'm going to return cats.sort the function that takes in cats and it returns that. And then here, instead of doing all that, I'm just going to call our new function, which is sort cats, and I'm going to pass in cats. And then I'm going to set the cat list to the sorted cats. And since we're defining sort cats right here, it should be fine. Uh, we are defining this below. Um, and in JavaScript, it's fine to define a function below where you call it, even though we're calling it up here and defining it down here, it should be fine. Uh, when JavaScript is in strict mode, I think it sometimes doesn't let you do that or no, it, it always, do, it always lets you do that with functions because functions are hoisted, which means they're in like, it's like a inner workings of JavaScript, JavaScript like pulls all of your function or definitions up to the top of the page so that uh, when you, basically if, if you haven't worked in other programming languages, uh, then it doesn't matter. But if you worked in other programming languages, uh, you typically can't call a function before you define it. But in JavaScript, we can, yeah, should be fine. Um, if it was an arrow function, then we couldn't. OK. So we have that function here. We pulled it out into its own thing. And then we're calling it here. And I'm actually in our handle sort toggle click. I'm going to call sort cats. And we're going to sort the cats again. And then this time I'm going to pass in the sort or the cat list, which is our actual state. Um, and I'm going to set the cat list to sorted cats. And actually, what I could do is I could set the cat list. I could pass in a function here that's like a, what do you call it? We could do something like that. Uh, I forgot what the function is called that you pass into a setter in like a use state setter. But this way we we always get the most recent version of the cat list. 
So we're setting the cat list to the previous cat list sorted. Um, when we handle sort toggle quick. Okay, that ended up a little bit more, a little, <laughs> a little bit more stuff going on than I was expecting, but uh, okay. Looks like it only it doesn't work on the first one around. It could be because here, um, this one doesn't take into account the sorting order, possibly. I don't know why. I'm not going to worry about it right now. We got we got it. OK, we're changing the sorting order, and it's sorting the cats differently, which is great. Uh, we could also like we could implement this in a way that it like changes these queries. Like I could I could have this change so that um, it's like descending so that it sorts it uh, in the actual fetch based on this new sort ascending variable we have, the state. Um, I could I could change it to do like any of these different styles of sorts. Um, if we did this, then we would have to pull this fetch data logic out and, or, yeah, I guess we could probably just call this, we could call this with a, a button. So it would call, it would recall this function and fetch new data, uh, from the server and change that to match what our new state is. We could do that if we wanted, but. That would be unnecessarily uh, fetching more information from the server, which I think it would be better practice to sort locally, which is what we're doing, which is good. OK, let's see. Any other stretch goals you want to tackle? Sort by a different field, such as created time. We could do that. Uh, we could just, I'm just going to modify this. I'm not going to like change, no, I'm not going to give us more options. I'm just going to modify this to show you what it would look like if we wanted to sort by a different thing. So we could do, um, let's see, where are we calling this? Sort cats, we're passing in cats. Uh, we're sorting cats. Um, we're calling sort ascending or sort descending. Um, and we're sorting by the title. So here, we could probably change that to created at. Or created time, I guess is what it's called. Oh, created time. So now we're we're calling these sorting functions. The nice thing about uh, like if you remember when I created these fu these functions, I was like, how about the functions can take in just a string, and then uh, or like a value, like a number or something, and so they don't need to be the functions don't need to be accessing these properties. We actually pass in the properties themselves. That allows us to do the logic up here, and, and it makes more sense to do it up here rather than having these, because otherwise we'd have to go and change the logic in both of these functions if both of these functions got passed in just the objects like that. So this way we get to just change it right here. We'll see if that works. I'll do a new cat. Does anyone have any good uh, cat celebrity pun names? We want to do a new cat so that when we sort by the created at order, we can see if this cat we'll, we'll know which one is the most recent. I could also, I could 
Chat GPT it. Give me some um cat celebrity. Some celebrity names. I forgot what I how I word this. Give me some celebrity names that are cat puns. Um and that, I, instead of celebrity, because I'll just get the same ones that I always get, let's do like famous um athletes. Let's try that. Oh, Brad Kitt. <laughs> That's a good one. Wow, these are really bad. <laughs> wow. Okay. Gemini sometimes does great. Sometimes it really struggles, but uh, I like... I like... um. Oh, I was going to add it into my uh, code, but no, we're, we're adding it to Airtable. Brad Kit. Yay. Okay. And I'll also add a uh, cookie dough. As Natalie suggested, cookie dough. And let's see, did we get any more? Jennifer Aniston. That's really good. Awesome. Okay. Um, and Apollo Kitten. Cool. Okay, we got lots of cats now. So uh, I, I think we'll hopefully remember which which ones we added the most recently. Um, we don't remember. We don't need to remember the exact order. We just need to know. These these four we added recently. And so we should make sure that when we do sort by uh, created at or created time, that it's um, bunching those all up together. So sorting by created time. And now we can see it does kind of look like this is alphabetical, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N, N. This looks alphabetical. Yeah, especially because like cookie dough and Jennifer Aniston, those are more recent. So it's not it's not sorting by uh, ascending right now. Let's see what's going wrong. Maybe I just need to reload. <laughs> nope. Okay, why when I do sort cats, is it not? Let's see. I wonder what uh, what created time, like maybe these aren't, aren't working. I'll console log um, object a dot created time and just make sure that's defined. Make sure that's not undefined. And for this, I could do like the label thing that I like to do like that. I'll show you another trick though. You can put it inside an object. Oh, wait. <laughs> you can't do that if it's uh, um, accessing a property. There's a way to put it inside an object and that'll also show you, like it'll give you like a label in a way. It's like a hack. Yep, a label for the console log that you want. Okay, it's undefined. So. Uh, created time is not a property on these things. So uh, let's see, let's see what these these objects look like. ID and title. Oh, that makes sense. I'm not storing the created time locally. Like we're doing this fetch right here. Uh, we're getting the response. We're mapping through it, and we're only grabbing the ID and title. For the cats, we're not adding the created time. So if we want those, we could do created time here. And then we could store that locally. Like that. 
Now our cats should have a created time property. Um, if uh, created time is a thing, and yeah, that looks like it works. So now we have, these are the most recent cats that we added, and these are the previous ones. And if I change it, now they're all appearing at the bottom in the opposite order. Cool. Okay. Um, when I call sort cats, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why it's um, why I have to like press this button twice <laughs> to get it to work at first. So when I call that, what does it do? Handle sort toggle click previous cats sort cats. Sort ascending. Oh, it's because I'm swapping the sort ascending variable before I. <laughs> this is actually a um, yeah. I need to I need to change the value of sort ascending before I call that. But the problem is if I do that, then. This, when I call this, it won't have the most recent version version of sort ascending. Um, so I need to wait until sort ascending updates to sort the cats by the correct value. So what I'll actually do here is I'll just have this take in the sort ascending. Uh, I'll have it take in a parameter of that, and I'll just pass it in. And here I'll pass it in as the opposite. Because if I just passed it in like that, this would not have updated it yet when it calls this because of React's way of scheduling updates to state variables. It would schedule this update and then it would call this sort function and it would call this sort function with the outdated version of sort ascending. But if I pass in the same opposite value, that I'm passing in right here. Now it should actually uh, change. And I need to make sure that when I'm calling sort cats up here, I'm passing in that variable too. But here I want to pass in the actual sort ascending order, the current one. Let's but see if that think works. Maybe you could use the async await where you need to wait for React to uh, uh, you know, update that variable. Um. That's a good thought. React doesn't give us an async await to be able to respond to their updates. Oh. What we would be able to do is we could say, we could do like a use effect. Uh -huh. We could do a use effect. And in this use effect, we could say, um, call, call the sort function. And pass in whatever cats sort ascending. Um, but instead of having sort ascending, we don't need it if we do the use effect. What we could do is have a dependency array right here. And the dependency array will listen for sort ascending to change. And then when sort ascending changes, then we call sort cats, and I guess we don't have to pass it in if sort ascending, if we're using the actual like thing. This is going to be cat list, actually. Um, and then sort cats is going to have the most up to date version because it's only going to call sort cats when sort ascending changes. So when, whenever sort ascending changes, it'll call sort cats. Um, and it'll call it with the most recent version of sort ascending, because it'll only call this when sort ascending changes. This basically says, whenever sort ascending, the variable changes, recall sort cats. And it'll call it and use the most recent version. This is an anti-pattern in React, though. 
if you can avoid um, basically like we're responding to a state variable right here changing um, and it's this would work and this is the way that like like I definitely like when I first started learning react I would do this kind of thing where I go okay I want to wait for a variable to change and then I want to call some other state updater once I get the most recent version of that state the problem with doing this is it's not uh, good. It's, uh, oh. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure it, uh, slows down react and makes things more confusing and everything. Um, what you really want to do is say, if you are the one who's changing this variable, this state variable, then wherever you're changing it, do whatever you would be doing in here. So we don't have to wait for this variable to change. We could go wherever we're changing this variable. Let's just make sure to call the right call this function and call it in the right way. Um, yeah, and 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 that's uh, because use effect is only for when you're dealing with. It's only supposed to be for when you're dealing with like variables that are, um, or, or like state that's like not purely just within your React code. If you can um, update all of your React state without using a use effect, then you should do it. But in the case of like, um, you know, we have to load something from a database on the first render of our React component, which is what this use effect is doing right here. We're saying on the first render and only on the first render, that's what this empty dependency array says, we're going to fetch our cats. Um, for something like that, that's interacting with some like external uh, service, uh, then we can use a use effect and it's totally fine. But when we're just working within our, um, when we're just working with a, only our own React state locally, it's best to avoid using use effect if you can. So definitely a good thought. Uh, this, this way is, uh, it should work. And yeah, now, now when I update it, it does uh, sort on the first click of the button, which is good. Okay, let's see, last stretch goal. Currently, we need to refresh the browser in order to sort new tasks by date. Have a new task automatically sorted when added. Hint, using the hooks already imported in place, how do you update the code so that the app state changes with the new task? Um, so it's saying when we add a new to-do, or a new cat, in my case, um, the new cat isn't added with uh, like preserving the sort order. So uh, here's our add cat function, and and you might not have this because this was a stretch goal from a while back. But uh, if you do have this add cat logic, or wait, I think it ended up being like an actual part of the thing. I can't remember. Um, if you have an add cat function, then you can follow along. If not, that's fine. Um, but this is doing another fetch. It's very similar to the get the get cat function, except we pass in a new cat title. And then our options here for fetch is a lot longer. It's saying we're doing a post request instead of a get request and blah, 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 blah. Here's the body of the request, which is where we're creating a JSON object, which is the format that things get transported over the internet, or one of them. Um, and we're sending over this object, which has our new cat title. It's very verbose, but all we're doing here is saying for our fetch, uh, we're adding a new cat title into the options. And then we're fetching from the same URL, but we're passing in this new options, which has our cat title and it's doing a post request. So that's adding a new cat into Airtable. Then we do that. We say fetch, and we send a, a cat over. And then we get the data back. Uh, the new cat 
comes back from data. And here I'm saying new cat equals data dot records at zero dot fields dot title. So we're constructing a, a new cat, um, which is returned when we send a cat. So uh, when you when you get from a database, you will um, you'll get the things you want, and then when you post to a database, uh, you'll still get information back. And the thing that you get back is usually depending on the API. Uh, it's usually uh, their version of the thing that you just stored. And so when we get data back from a post request, this data will have our new um, new cat that we just added. And I'm going to console log it here just to make sure. Um, and I'll say like new cat. new cat, I'm going to console log. And I'm going to delete other console logs if I have them in here. Let's see. Oh, I think I deleted all the ones that I want to delete. OK, so we should only have this one showing up, which is good. Um, OK. So when I add a cat, we're going to see what happens. Uh, I'll just say new cat. Okay, so here's our new cat. It showed up and it's in Airtable right there. And it's added to the top of our list. And that's because right here, I have set cat list to the previous cat list to whatever the cat list was with the new cat at the start and then the rest of the cats. So I'm basically just like locally, I'm saying whatever cat I just add to the database, just add it to the top of the new cat or of the cats array. So it'll always get added to the top when we add a cat. And now what the stretch goal is asking is when we add a new cat, um, we have to refresh the browser in order for this the cats to be sorted. So have a new task that uh, the, the new cat is automatically sorted when added. Um, so instead of just adding this cat just wherever, I'm going to add it at the right place. Um, and honestly, I think I think I know what the best way to do this would be, which um, okay, so so what we get back here, this data, um, this is we get one cat back. We get a records array with one cat. And so that's why we're doing records zero because it's sending back one cat. It's an array that just has one cat in it. Uh, so this new cat is just that. And we're going to set the cat list to instead of just uh, putting the new cat at the end and then the rest of the cats, I'm going to store this in a variable. I'm going to say const um, cat, what do I call it up here? Cat list. Yeah, cat list. Cat list with new cat equals that. I can't get the previous cat list right now like that. Um, OK, I want to do it in here. Um, actually, instead of storing a separate variable, I'm, I'm going to do it. It's going to look a little it's going to look a little crazy, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. So this is creating a new array using the current cat list, like the previous version of it before we got the new cat. It's creating a new array with the new cat and all the rest of the cats that we already have, but it's not sorted. And so what we could do is just in here, we could call the sort function and pass in that new array, right? 
sort cats. Um, and then the sort order. So here, I think I can do that, yep. Sort cats, oh wait, like that. Pass in that new array, and then the sort order. It's a little crazy, but I think that should work. I think that should sort it in place within this setter. So I should take the previous cat list, we're going to call the sort cats function, which returns the new cats list that's sorted. And it's going to set the new sorted cat list as the version of the cat list with the new cat. OK, let's try it. If I reload now, the new cat should be, oh, how did it end up there? Oh, it's sorting by um, date or time added. So this would be at the top. Anyways, um, so how about I, I could change it back to, because I feel like if I, if I add a new cat, it's always going to get added to the top. It was getting added to the top already, but if we're sorting it based on time added, then that, um, that will always be the same anyways. So how about I um, sort by title again? I'll go back here and I'll do change all these to title. Title. OK. And this is in reverse alphabetical order, it looks like. I still don't know if sort ascending means alphabetical or uh, reverse alphabetical, just so you know. So if that's wrong, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it's alphabetical and then reverse alphabetical is the descending. Okay. So this is wrong. Because right now this is descending order, or, or this is reverse alphabetical. Oh, oops. It's okay. I will do... I'll just change these. I'll say this sort ascending is going to be negative one, one. That should fix it. OK. OK, what were we doing? Looking at if we add a new cat, it should end up in the right place, which uh, this is perfect, because now our new cat is at the end, because sorting by uh, ascending is true. So if I add new cat again, we should expect it to show up at the bottom. Yep. There it goes. Okay, so it's sorting as we add it, which is good. And the reason is because when I add a cat, let's see, when I add a cat, I'm sorting the cat list. I'm adding, I'm creating a new array with the new cat, and then I'm sending that into the sort cats function. And then I'm returning that into this set cat list setter. I know functions and arrays and all sorts of stuff going on here, but this is getting the new cat putting it in an array with the existing cats, sorting it, and returning the sorted array. And because we're returning the sorted array, this function is happy. This function will set the new cat list to the return value of this, which is the new sorted cats array with the new cat. And we're good. OK, that was all. Pretty snazzy cat list we're having here. Best cat list on the block. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna delete uh, this sort of sending thing right there. So it's a little better. Okay. How's everyone feeling? I'm probably gonna call it here. Thank you so much for your help. This is really great. 
Yeah, of course. Happy to help. Thanks a lot, as usual. Super helpful. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thank you all for sticking around for so long. It's like two hours and 15 minutes. Appreciate it. Well, there was a lot of stuff to cover. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure what we're doing next time, but uh, if you want to do like even more stretch goals, like if you want to like really challenge yourself, I would look into, well, it, it would be a pretty big challenge, but you could look into uh, pagination and how to do that, which pagination means like uh, you are fetching uh, like 10 cats or something. And then you could have like um, a button that's like, go to the next page of cats. Like when you go to like Google's website and you're looking at the search results and then you can like go to the bottom. And if you didn't find the website you're looking for, you can hit like, you know, page two or page three. So pagination means like different pages and each page will fetch a certain section, a certain subset of that data. Um, you can do that here, but it would be, it, it's a multi-step process. If anyone does it, then, um, you know, don't, don't, don't try unless you like are really down for a, a challenge, but uh, that is something to look into, which is cool and fun. Um, anyways, I'll take off. Um, I hope, hope you all do well on your assignment and you know hit me up if you have any more questions i'll be around okay thank you yep thank you everyone thank bye you. thank bye. you bye thanks for a nice one bye